Isaac Newton, my man, a British scientist. He was a professor at University of Cambridge. He held the endowed chair that Stephen Hawking now holds, the Lucasian professor of mathematics. And he was a physicist. Today, we would think of him as a physicist. Because he, like, discovered the laws of optics and the laws of motion and the laws of gravity. And, like, practically on a dare, he invents integral and differential calculus. Then he turned 26, OK? So Isaac Newton uh, was brilliant. He comes up with his laws of motion and laws of gravity, and they apply to everything he had ever seen or measured. Although the fastest anyone had ever moved might have been a galloping horse in his day. But it explained the moon going around the Earth and the Earth going around the sun. And it would later explain Jupiter's moons going around Jupiter. So it wasn't just a law of things that went around the sun. It appeared to be kind of universal in the literal use of that term as opposed to how that word is used so often in our culture. Miss Universe, she's Miss Earth, please, all right? The man discovered the laws of gravity by sitting there, okay? It's rumored that he sat under the apple tree, but what is certain is that he knew in the same field of view, he saw an apple drop and the moon in orbit around the Earth. Okay, he sees the two of them. One is falling to the ground and the other is like up there in space. He connects the two and suggests that the same force of gravity is operating on both of them. They're both falling towards Earth, he hypothesizes. Well, how's that possible? He drew a diagram to illustrate this. In fact, that diagram is on the wall over there called orbits. He suggested, suppose you had a hill and you sort of fire a cannonball. Not very fast. It would just sort of kind of fall, right? Fire it a little faster. It goes farther before it hits the ground, doesn't it? Even faster, it'll go even farther. Now, wait a minute, Earth is curved. So if you keep this up, this thing is coming around the backside of the Earth. So he asked himself, there must be a speed sufficiently high so that that cannonball comes right back to the cannon. The fact is the cannonball is falling every moment it's there. The difference is it's going sideways so fast that the amount that it has fallen is the same amount that the Earth's surface has curved away from it. That is the speed that gets you orbit. He figures this out. And that's why the moon is behaving the same way the apple is. Newton, his questions, reached into the soul of the universe. And he pulled out insights and wisdom that transformed our understanding of our place in the cosmos. He basically birthed the entire industrial revolution with the physics, the physics that enabled us to understand matter and motion, led to the understanding of energy which is the foundations of the Industrial Revolution. Einstein comes along. Now, by the way, Einstein came up with relativity by the time he was 26. But he didn't invent a whole new system of mathematics in tandem with it, the way Newton did, having invented calculus before he turned 26. So, I, he's my man. And I have a statue of him over there. That's, that's Isaac Newton. Huh. And I own everything he's ever written.